Hey, welcome to another video making Wraith Binder. Man, I'm stoked about this week. It's been really fun. Check this out. Uh, the player can now um, switch between different stances. So right now, this is sort of like the nun stance or the 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 stance where you don't even have your weapon in your hand, right? You got your sword on your back, running around, and then um, there's no transitional animation just yet. But I'll have an animation where the player will sheath unsheath their sword and be able to sheath their sword as well but if I just press a button there to use the the, uh, the sword we'll switch to the sword stance here and now we're back to the sword stance which is sort of like uh, what I've always this has been the default animation for now um, so we've got stances the player has these different stances which is awesome because when we go to having like a bow weapon or a gun weapon or um, a two-handed axe versus a single-handed sword stuff like that we can have different stances and all of this is done without really having me have to do tons of more animations um, and uh, that's kind of been covered in many of the videos previously on uh, how this whole model compilation works where it takes a piece of each each piece of the person is compiled and um, creates a model out of all those different pieces and if you have a sword um, it will render that sword as part of the animation or if you have an axe it'll render the axe or if you're holding a bow it'll be the bow and so now we've got these different animations here in blender where uh, this is the player run um, this is kind of a let's, let's look at a different example I'm, this is looks weird looking at this run animation inside blender for some well I'll show you what I'm talking about and this run animation has this sort of weird <laughs> hitch in his step but in the game it looks just right because it um, because some I don't know <sighs> I can't tell you exactly why, but when it hits frame 60 right here, it's looks it just looks really weird when it transitions inside Blender. But then inside uh, in the game, it looks great. Um, but let's look at Idle A. Let's not save that. Here's just the idle animation for um, the player just standing there, right? He's got boobs because um, you can be female or male. Um, but basically, yeah, so when, you, when you're rendering a male character, it won't have these boobs. But if you're a female, you need them. You want them. Um, and then, so that's player idle A. And then we've got idle B. Let's, I haven't even edited that today. But here we go. Here's idle B, where you've got the sword. Let's go back to that same sort of angle, camera angle. So that's, that's what the other animation's like. If you're holding your, your melee weapon in your hands, this is what that will look like. And it's all implemented with a pretty simple system of uh, A versus B. A is the, the the stance where you have no weapon. Your weapon's on your back, I mean. And B is the stance where you've got your weapon in your hand. And then we'll have like C and D. Those will be the bow and the gun stance and s other stuff, you know. Um, it's but it's really neat to have this uh, this setup so where you have different stances and the player can transition between them and also check it out so we've got item forges as well that's kind of the whole point of this video here is this, these new item forges I've been working on this week but basically you go up to an item forge and you can select which item you want to build and for right now I've got these these this kind of looks tiny with that little helmet it's like it's too small so what I've done with some items because I've gone and drawn them specifically bigger, like the sword. Well, let's let's get rid of the sword here real quick. I'm gonna make my player so he doesn't own the sword anymore. We'll go into the game again, and we'll buy the sword, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the sword is tw like 1.618 times the size of the actual sword in your hand. So let's see how big it is. And the same with these swords right here on the wall. They're super big. You come over here to this sword and we buy it and uh, the player will transition their stance and their animation so that when he buys it now he's got a sword on his back check it out it's pretty sweet so he's got the sword on his back he can run around with the sword do all the animations even you can even teleport so we see what happens I haven't tried this yet there you go yeah teleport animation with the sword on the back Pretty sweet. What I'm, what's so exciting about this for me, from my perspective as a developer, is that I don't have to do very much work to change all these stances. It's really just creating another Blender animation, which is which is pretty easy. Look, I mean, look how many, look how few animations I've got in this game right now. 
That's like, you know, the, those blend ones are not even don't even count. These ones count right here. That's a, that's two stances worth of animations so far for lots of different things a player can do. Aim, throw, blink, celebrate, hovering, jumping, kneeling, landing, all that kind of stuff. It's exciting stuff because if I want to go change this sword, all I got to do is go model another sword. Look at these models here. Uh in these model parts, weapon, oh, let's go to weapon. Any one of these weapons will do. That's a spear. There's an axe. Right? There's another axe. All these things get compiled for me automatically into these Blender files because of the engine I've been writing for Wraithbinder. Man, I'm stoked about it. Just want to say, I, I'm so excited. This is really working out well. I don't have to, with Songbringer, um, to create another stance or another type of animation <clears throat> required almost, so I remember one time when I added the shirt, and I added I added this shirt, so you in Songbringer you're shirtless mostly, your whole adventure, right? But you can all, you can earn the shirt and it's like your armor, right? it can add, it adds armor to your, your whole calculations of damage and stuff like that. Uh, so, but the shirt animation had to change every single frame of, of the main character's animations in Songbringer, which took me nearly a week. I think it was actually two weeks the first time I added another animation to the player because there were little, there's thousands, thousands of hand-drawn single frame, or I mean, animations with one frame after another in, in sequence, and all of those had to be edited one frame at a time. And there was one point even that my publisher, Double Eleven, even helped me out. They're like, you know what? It's taking you forever just to do this one new um, animation. We're going to help you out with this. <laughs> so they did. And so, but this, what's so great about this is all I got to do is draw one single model. And it updates every single one of the nearly thousands of permutations of animations. Like this, for example, this... Um, this running animation right here, this single animation has like maybe 30 frames in it, right? It lasts for, if it lasts for a whole second, and there's 30 frames per second in the in the output of the animations. That's 30 frames, and all I got to do is update one single animation where I just update some Blender, and then it outputs all those frames for me. I'm so happy about the engine I'm creating here. But uh, let's get back to the forges. So the forges are something where you can buy items and you can switch between the items you want to buy. I really haven't settled on an interface just yet. Um, but this is kind of what it looks like, right? You get to the item forge and you can cycle between the different items you can purchase. Right here's some grenades. And uh, that's another one of those models that I need to make bigger so it looks better when you're trying to buy it. Right now it's tiny, it's this tiny little grenade. But if you go back to the sword, it kind of looks cool. It's this big old sword, you're like, sweet, looks awesome. Um, and then when you buy it, let's, let's buy this. We're gonna buy the sword. But oh, we already did this. But there you go, sword on the back. Um, let's go buy some other stuff. Here's a, this is another one that needs to be updated to the graphic for it, but there's hair. You want to buy some hair? Sweet, let's buy some hair. Now we got a mohawk. Heck yeah, mohawk and a sword on my back. There's a shield, there's a helmet, let's buy, there's a breastplate, let's buy the cloak though. I love the cloaks. Yeah, we got a, a cloak, a haircut, and a sword. Stoked. So all this is really going to help out the whole online universe that Wraithbinder is, right? This is like some place where I'm buying items. Maybe it's a space station. Maybe it's my own ship. Let's buy it. Let's buy this blink. No, let's buy Levitate. Boots, Levitate. These item forges, though, are... are uh, are really helping the meta game come together for Songbringer. Alright, it's Wraithbinder. <laughs> it's called Wraithbinder Songbringer. Sorry, Wraithbinder. Teleport to battle. 
So that's really all I've been working on lately. These item forges, switching between different player animations. Right right now we're running with uh, with the sword on the back, but I would imagine if you're warping into battle, you want to start with your sword out. So maybe you'd unsheath your sword right there. I'll work on an unsheath animation tonight. That'd be fun. But a really cool, really cool phase of the game right now, having uh, having the player be able to switch between these stances and and sort of like look right. You know, it looks, it just looks a lot more right when you start out the game and you have nothing, and you actually look like you have nothing, and then you you buy a sword and now you look, you have a sword, and its the visuals are neat because the animations change. So, I'm excited. Um, thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you with another update on Wraith Finder later on. See ya! See ya!